I'm really excited to be here to teach to you guys our second lecture on Chapter 2's discussion on an introduction to organic compounds. <laughs> After this lecture, you should be able to do the following two things. Name alkanes, cyclocanes, alkyl halides, ethers, alcohols, and amines using the IUPAC naming system and have memorized the following non-systematic names and structures, isopropyl, secbutyl, isobutyl, and terbutyl. With that said, let's begin. Now, there are literally millions of different organic compounds in this world. Many of them have everyday uses. A few of such useful compounds include propan-2-amine, or isopropylamine, shown here, which is the active ingredient in Roundup weed killer. Diethyl ether, one of the very first anesthetics, Polyvinyl chloride, also known as PVC, the plastic used in PVC plumbing pipe. Pentane, which is a reagent used to make polystyrene, a plastic found in CD and DVD cases. And butan one all, which is used to make perfumes, antibiotics, hormones, and vitamins. Now, once again, this, these are just a few examples that I wanted to show you guys, but there are a few of many, many tens of thousands of useful organic compounds. Now, I realize that the compounds' names shown here might be a little strange. So how in the world do chemists come up with compounds' crazy names anyway? That is what we're going to learn today. Now, as it turns out, there exists an organization called IUPAC, which stands for the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. This is the organization responsible for our current organic chemistry naming system. So yes, they've invented a very systematic way of naming compounds, and you'll soon learn that it's pretty neat. So in general, all organic compounds, IUPAC names, look like this. We name substituents, and then after the substituents' names, we include the parent name of the compound. So you might be wondering, what in the world is a substituent? <laughs> Well, quite simply, a substituent is any appendage dangling off of the parent chain. And you might be wondering then, what in the world is a parent chain? That is a soul probing question of soul probing probarity. What is a parent chain? And how often do professors use the word probing in a sentence? Okay, well, I don't know the answer to the last question, but I do know the answer regarding parent chains. What is a parent chain? Well, generally speaking, an organic molecule's parent chain is the longest chain of atoms, primarily carbon atoms, that contains the molecule's highest priority functional group. Oh, crap. See, I know that I just use a new vocabulary word. So you see, this teaching business can get really complicated really quick. <laughs> so you're probably wondering, why am I watching this? By which I mean, what is a functional group? Okay. So in the world of organic chemistry, every molecule contains different parts of it that can participate in a chemical reaction. These reacting parts or groups are called functional groups. Now, I realize that by daring to utter that sentence, I'm probably inciting you students to ask, what do you mean by highest priority? <laughs> well, you know, honestly, I think that's going to have to wait for another lecture because I don't want to make you go crazy. Let's get back to our functional group question. Now, as I already mentioned, functional groups are just parts of molecule that participate in chemical reactions. Now, this table includes a list of numerous functional groups with which you will gradually become familiar over the course of the semester. For now, I'm not demanding that you memorize all of their structures and names. I just want to introduce them to you. Say hello to the scream extractor. Hello. The first functional group I'll introduce to you is called a carboxylic acid. It has the generic structure shown here. Thus, you'll see that if I have a molecule that has a carbon double bonded to one oxygen and then single bonded to an OH on the other side, with an alkyl chain of some sort dangling off the opposite side of the carbon, it is a carboxylic acid. Now, one thing I want to point out is that anytime you see the uh, letter R used in these structures, R is a generic letter that just means any hydrocarbon chain. It could be a cyclic chain, or it could be a straight chain, or a branch chain. It's just a generic term. The next functional group is an ester. An ester looks like this molecule. It's essentially one in which you've got a central carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to some hydrocarbon chain on one side, and then single bonded to an oxygen that's single bonded to another hydrocarbon chain on the other. Additional functional groups with their structures are shown here. Acid chlorides, which look like this. Amides, which look like this. Nitriles, which look like this. Aldehydes, which look like this. Ketones, which look like this. Now you'll note the difference between an aldehyde and a ketone is the fact that 
an aldehyde, has a carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen, has a hydrocarbon chain on one side and a hydrogen on the other. Whereas in a ketone, you've got a carbon double bonded to an oxygen that has an alkyl chain on one side and a different alkyl chain on the other. Now, I should point out these two alkyl chains don't have to be different, but they can be. In, in either case, it is still a ketone. Additional functional groups I want to introduce to you include alcohols, which look like this, phenols, which look like this, and this pH is an abbreviation for a phenyl ring. What that means is it's a six-membered ring called a benzene ring that we'll talk about in a later chapter. Amines, which look like this. Alkenes, which look like this. They contain a carbon-carbon double bond. Alkynes, which look like this. They contain a carbon-carbon triple bond. And lastly, ethers, which look like this. They have two alkyl groups that are joined by an oxygen in the middle. Now please keep in mind that there are actually more functional groups in real life than the ones that I've shown you here. I have included the, some of the most important ones here, but they're there were still a few that I couldn't fit onto this slide.